I'm Joel Crosskill. Government Senator Matthew Samuda was today appointed to the cabinet as Minister Without Portfolio in the Ministry of National Security. Samuda replaces Pernell Charles Jr., who is now representing the Jamaica Labour Party in the Southeast Clarendon constituency. Senator Samuda, who is also a past president of the Generation 2000 G2K, is now the youngest member of the cabinet. He led the motion to formulate the plastic ban into law on January 1, 2019. The Jamaica Defence Force says its search continues for two guns that are missing from the Up Park Camp base in Kingston. Up Park Camp, CVM Live understands that two M16 rifles were unaccounted for at the armory on Saturday. There was no indication of when the guns had gone missing. Reports are that the Camp Road location has been on lockdown since. Access to the entrance and exit have been restricted. This is the second time in just over a month that the JDF have reported a breach in their weapons inventory. In January, JDF soldier and arms personnel Doran McKenzie allegedly killed his wife and then turned the gun on himself in what police are describing as a murder-suicide. The gun was allegedly stolen from the JDF armory. Media affairs officer at the JDF, Basil Jarrett, says the public will be notified when the weapons are found. The JDF continues to search for the two M16 rifles that were discovered missing on Saturday. At present, entry and exit to a park camp is restricted and we'll continue the investigations and the process and as soon as we have something to, new to report the public will be informed a deadly threat to safety and security in schools that's how president of the jamaica teachers association jta describes the infamous jump trip challenge that has gained popularity through social platforms school administrations are being advised to enforce strict actions against students who participate in the challenge more in this report with christine forbes the jump trip or skull breaker challenge has left at least one student with a broken arm after he took part in the challenge, the challenge has three persons standing in a horizontal line. The two persons at either end give the one in the middle the impression that all three of them will jump, when actually they will proceed to trip the middle person. President of the Jamaica Teachers Association, Owen Speed, is calling for greater vigilance from staff and student leaders against the viral challenge. The association is at this time deeply concerned and indeed disturbed by the infamous stripping jump challenge perpetrated by unthinking and uncaring students in our schools. We see it as a deadly threat to safety and security in our schools at a time when we are seeking to make our schools into safe zones which are conducive to teaching and learning. While Speed is urging students not to engage in the act, he is insisting that school administrators have a zero tolerance approach to the jump trip challenge. Let us, as a nation, unite around the cause of taking back our schools from the idle factions that seek to maim and destroy at all costs. We must, at this time, exact a zero-tolerance approach and, definitive, and establish definitive consequences for these potentially de deadly acts against innocent students. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information sent out an advisor recently informing schools of the nature of the jump trip challenge while highlighting the risks and dangers it poses to those who participate. Acknowledging some of the irreversible damage that can come from the challenge, the National Secondary Students Council is calling for students not to take part in what they describe as a ridiculous challenge. Broken leg, arms, severe spinal damage that can lead to death. This needs to stop. I repeat, this, this needs, needs to stop. stop. Christine Forbes, CVM Live. The Ministry of Health says there is no reason to be concerned about the quarantine facility off Shortwood Road after residents protested the government's disregard for not making them aware of their decision. The facility, which is owned by the Ministry of Health, is being used to house Jamaicans who have returned from China. But the residents argue that they were only aware of the news after seeing an increased police presence and on social media. Jamaila Maitland was there. 
Residents of Allardyce Drive are protesting the government's approach to converting one of its Ministry of Health building into a quarantine facility for suspected cases of the coronavirus. The residents argue that, like those in Vineyard Town, they too were unaware. This is the building being used as a quarantine facility for Jamaicans who have returned from China. The Ministry of Health says the building housed the first set of nationals. Some have even been released. But the residents argue that they were blindsided by what was going on inside the facility. It was not until they saw an increase in police presence at the location that they found out what was happening. We are concerned because we have now found out that this um, government ministry or government facility is somewhere where they're having, um, they're housing people who they suspect or who they're not sure of having the corona um, virus. While there, the building's private security company was called to deal with passers-by with a camera outside the facility and groundsmen asking us to relocate. Soon after the police arrived and questioned our interest at the location and also took our names. One they said is part of their regular policing duties at this location. Another resident argued that there was no meeting to sensitize residents of the operations just meters away from their home. CVM Live spoke to an administrator of a basic school across the street who also observed the increased police presence but was unaware of what was taking place. But Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says the facility only acts as a containment area and not for those who have symptoms of the coronavirus. I don't think there's any reason to be concerned um, uh, an isol uh, quarantine facility means that we just hold persons who display no symptoms at all for a period of 14 days based on the WHO guidelines uh, to see if they actually have the virus. The residents argue that unlike those in Vineyard Town who were notified, they were not. They're calling on a stakeholders meeting to update the community on the facility's operations. The least they can do now is meet in the community. That's the least they can do. And, you know, to bring us up to date at this point to say what, you know, the status. Jamila Maitland for CVM Live. Residents of a community in St. Andrew have taken the issue of safety and security into their own hands. This follows a spate of robberies that have been affecting the area for years. They have now moved to keep a watchful eye over the community in order to protect and save lives. Khadija Thomas now reports. At one point, Pembroke Hall residents were fearful of walking alone along these streets as robberies happened far too frequently and at any time of the day. Incidents of robbery, you know, um, by cars, stuff like that. Residents have now reportedly pulled their resources to buy surveillance cameras that have been fitted to light poles along several avenues. They say this is one means of safeguarding those who live here. The avenues that are camera, that has camera, has no incidents of robbery, anything at all. So we are of the view that with this initiative, it is definitely helping. Since they have been in use, residents say there has been a reduction in robberies. Per day, you have like about four or five thefts. And now, since the installment of the camera, we have maybe one or two been happening. But I can tell you, it is a great stem towards crime by using the cameras. Councillor for the UN Den Division, Andrew Harris, has played a part in this surveillance camera initiative. According to him, the frequent theft in Pembroke Hall was a call for action to be taken. They have bought the cameras, installed them, and they have seen a 100% reduction, 100% reduction in all criminal activities that were taking place on those avenues that have the cameras now. So it's an initiative that we're trying to spread right across the entire division. Khadija Thomas, CVM Live. The weekend saw the formal induction of newcomer Dr. Winston De La Haye within the People's National Party, who will be contesting the East Central St. Catherine seat. Dr. De La Haye told supporters that he will be unseating the Jamaica Labour Party member in the next general election. Robian Williams tells us more. 
Dr. Winston Delahaye has been formally introduced as the People's National Party's challenger for the St. Catherine East Central seat. He will be going up against the Jamaica Labour Party's current member of parliament, Alando Terrellong. The big wigs of the party and supporters were out in their numbers at the Cedar Grove Academy in Gregory Park, Portmore on Sunday. One of the most qualified, prepared, Jamaican patriots, comrade Dr. Winston Delahaye. Delahaye says since his campaign started, he has received overwhelming support. I feel loved and certainly see it as a humbling experience to be here representing East Central St. Catherine. He replaces Arnaldo Brown, who was defeated by Terry Long in February 2016 by 479 votes. Comrades, we come to take it. This is certainly a combination of many years of service that I've done to my country. My country has been good to me, and it's my turn to assist my people. And party members wasted no time in taking several jabs at the current member of parliament in defense of Delahaye. The look of fear, Rasta man, we over here. Every day and get up in the man, toxic masculinity, toxic masculinity. I don't know what is that. We want to give you a member of parliament that will represent the issues in the constituency. MP Terrellong hits back on social media. He tweeted, We go placidly along amidst the raucous, toxic venom they spew, focused and unbothered as we help to build a better Jamaica. Delahaye, however, says he is confident of a victory. Let me take the seat, I'll make him go on slow on the box. Roby Ann Williams for CVM Live. The Jamaica Labour Party said it is welcoming any other member of the opposition People's National Party who wishes to switch allegiance and join in on the prosperity. The statement follows the recent crossover of the then PNP councillor Carrie Douglas, who is now a part of the JLP government. Christine Forbes has the details. Member of Parliament for East Rural St. Andrew Juliet Holness says the party welcomes Carrie Douglas with open arms an act she says others will receive if they decide to leave the PNP. If it is that there are persons who serve the PNP who would like to become a part of the Jamaica Labour Party family because they see Jamaica as a country and a people that are deserving of good representation and development and truly put Jamaica and Jamaicans first, then the Jamaica Labour Party will welcome each and every one with open arms. Holness believes that the younger generation is stepping away from family traditions which require them to stick to one party. She adds that she has witnessed a large number of persons leaving the PNP to join the Labour Party. A move she believes is because persons are seeing that the promised prosperity is attainable. Holness says she is confident that Douglas will now win the Trafalgar division. I believe the people of Jamaica has had an opportunity to see the difference in the performance of a Jamaica Labour Party government. There are just so many opportunities that have opened up for Jamaicans in terms of our low unemployment, in terms of additional housing, skills training for our young people, the whole program. Carrie Douglas was for the first time formally introduced as the new JLB chairman and councillor for the Trafalgar division. Douglas is in high spirits as she says she is ready to represent the JLP in the next local government election. I'm really committed to the task at hand and very happy to be here. I have Mr. Fabian Brown here, my former opponent, who is now my counterpart, new JLP counterpart, who is going to walk with me and who is going to help me to reorganize myself in the division alongside our new JLP leaders. Christine Forbes, CVM Live. When